We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Pete Skamarok, who's a principal data scientist at LinkedIn. Pete, welcome to the studio. Uh, great to be here. So let's talk a little bit about what, how you would define what a data scientist is in the, let's say, consumer internet or B2B world. Uh, sure. So uh, this is a term that's hot right now, data science, big data. Um, and I think that there, there's so many people taking on this title right now that it can get a little confusing as to what the original intent was and what it's evolved to be. Sure. Uh, so I'd go back to the original usage of the term back at Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and the original idea was, I think uh, Jeff Hammerbacher at Facebook gave a great talk at um, uh, Yahoo Brickhouse years ago, back in like 2006, where he talked about um, when they were getting the data team going, they would hire PhDs or hire uh, business analysts who do SQL, and they didn't really have quite the right skill set they wanted. What they wanted were people who had some business sense, um, who knew to focus on measuring the right things and, and moving the needle on the product, and who also could actually code, right? So it's one thing to you know, do some research algorithm and then hand it off to an engineering team, but they didn't want that kind of organization. They wanted actually people who would have some coding chops and have you know, some algorithmic ability and some business sense and actually be able to implement it. Um, and I think that evolved over time. Um, and so with the LinkedIn data team um, and with uh, you know, uh, places like Google and Amazon, they've actually used the title data scientist now as well. Um, so it sounds like, maybe if I can interrupt for a second, yeah. it sounds like what, what you're defining a data scientist is in this day and age is someone who has the technical ability to code or do these types of queries, mm -hmm. the mathematical know-how to sort of build and tune the algorithms, and then you marry that with the third piece, which is this yep. sort of understanding of product, market, business intelligence, right? Yeah. I, so how do the, and those three things come together to form somebody to be a data scientist. Form a Voltron. A Voltron yeah. of data science. That's right. So I think, uh, yeah, that's a good I way. To, I had to jam that in there. Yeah, I think, I think that, that'll be the headline, right? <laughs> Voltron of data science. So I, I, I think that's a good analogy um, because, uh, yeah, if you have any one of those other pieces, you're, not, you're something else, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you, there are a lot of people from the business intelligence community who say, well, data science, this is nothing new. I've been doing this for years. I think the new element is what you get with the scale of big data which requires some uh, deeper engineering abilities to handle that um, at scale. And then the other aspect is some of these more, you know, machine learning or advanced statistics, which wasn't traditionally used as much. Hmm. Um, but I, I think another quick way to summarize it would be that, uh, so Josh Willis from Cloudera says that a data scientist is usually a better uh, programmer than your average statistician and a better statistician than your average programmer. So they're, they're kind of a generalist in, right. in those three spheres. So let's say, and in our conversations before, you've always mentioned that it's hard to find people who have those mm -hmm. kind of three, three skills, right, to start. Yeah. And so maybe there are people out there who are interested in becoming, you know, taking this data science path, right, in their career, and they may be really strong in one of those pillars, mm -hmm. right? So let's say somebody is really strong in math, statistics, a little bit of business intel background, yeah. algorithms. Um, but they, they haven't, you know, they need to bone up on the technical side. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give that type of person, you know, as they're, you know, continuing on their career? Yeah, I think um, I, I, the best way to learn these things is by doing, I think, right? And so what I often look for, so if I'm interviewing someone uh, and, I, you know, that pick up on some of that kind of background, what I look for is evidence of passion and curiosity and some personal projects, right? So it's so easy now with GitHub and you know, with uh, all the op great open source tools out there. I actually look for someone who's taken a stab in some of their free time. And um, are, there, are there any specific places these types of people can go and just start? Yep. Or any specific languages you would point them to in terms right. of learning the stack? I, I would actually point to some courses on like Coursera or you know, Udacity, okay. one, of, one of these um, you know, uh, online learning uh, environments. There's great machine learning lectures. Okay. Uh, so I would I would start you know low barrier to entry is to just start learning self self teaching some of this stuff. Right. Um, learn Hadoop. Pick up you know so there's all these great O'Reilly books for every new technology under the sun. Um, I, so I tend to look for people who are driven and self taught in some of those areas. Right. And for business analysts, that would be what I would. I, so I've actually. I've had people reach out to me who are business analysts and yeah. took this route, and they're now data scientists at places like Twitter or Facebook. Oh, great. So it is possible, and it, I think it just takes, you know, learn some Python, learn Hadoop, 
um, put in some time, uh, you know, follow projects on GitHub and get, get rolling. Great. Now let's take the opposite of that. Someone, mm -hmm. Someone's out there who, you know, understands Hadoop and all, and all of that and is very technically strong, mm -hmm. right, in computer science terms, but maybe doesn't feel comfortable with the algorithmic part of it. Yep. What, how do they go and start building up that skill set? So I think, I think their on-the-job training is pretty important. So um, if somebody's still in school or in a PhD program, I would recommend get, get an internship that's more applied um, and where you are working with big data sets and working in a, bi in a business setting, actually trying to move the business forward. Um, there's also this uh, program uh, called Data Insight Fellows where they basically do a boot camp. So for people coming from um, an engineering background or coming from a physical science background who may have some of those skills but need to actually get the applied hands-on stuff at a LinkedIn or, or uh, in another big internet company, they, uh, they, they give them a six-week boot camp uh, to get up to speed. So in the final piece of it, I think what would be interesting just to you know, briefly go over is just what has your career been like in terms of uh, becoming a data scientist? Did you start out more on the technical side or more on the math sort of yeah. business intel side, and then how did you sort of carve your own path? Yeah, these, these kind of questions are always funny because I think in hindsight, yeah. you, you draw this clear line where right. you know, it all made sense. It was all leading towards something, but right. um, I think they're, they're all unique and different paths. For me, I started out, um, I was interested in science from an early age, um, and I did, I was really interested in the mind and neuroscience, right? So uh, I went to Brandeis. Uh, in high school, I was actually doing undergrad you know, research projects and things like that. Um, and then uh, in college, I found I was actually, I didn't like lab work. I liked signals and decoding things and thinking about the way the brain works and decoding that. So I got into um, actually doing math and physics, and I ended up majoring in math and physics. Um, and as I got towards graduation, I, I realized, hmm, I, you know, there's the startup stuff going on. This is back in like 2000, um, and I, you know, I, I actually wanted to get some, you know, you know I wanted to start working and, and building things. Um, and so the first company I was at was actually, uh, it was called ProfitLogic. It ended up being acquired by Oracle, uh, and we focused on retail price optimization. So kind of like airline pricing management, but mm -hmm. for retailers, how much do I charge for this shirt kind of thing, right? Um, and that was interesting because that gave me some of that bu the, the business sense, yeah, right? Yeah. Because very early on, we didn't know quite what we were doing, right? We were uh, mathematical consultants, right? Yeah. Um, and as we got deeper and deeper into this retail thing, we understand the business and how it works and how to optimize margins. Um, and then over time, you know, so I have a you know, whole bunch of different uh, jobs after that. But ultimately, where I ended up was getting more into machine learning, uh, doing some stuff at MIT and biodefense. Uh, and then I got into the consumer consumer uh, internet industry at AOL Search. Got it. Okay, great. Well, Peter, thanks for coming in and sharing yeah. all your knowledge around the space. Thanks. thanks. All right.